Next up, I'd like to introduce a different feature of JavaScript. It has to do with decision making and logic. It's called the switch statement. It's not as commonly used as the typical conditional with if, else if, and else, but in certain scenarios, it's really useful. So let me show you what it looks like or why you would use it. Imagine we have a variable with uh, a number representing the day of the week. So let's go with let day equals three. If I wanted to translate a number going from one to seven to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on, uh, depending on where you are in the world, I think people use different start dates for the week. I think outside of the US and Canada, it's start, the week starts on Monday, which makes a lot more sense than starting it on Sunday like we do in the US. So let's go with the international version. Using a standard conditional, we would check if day is equal to one, and I'll fast forward through this, but we would console.log Sunday, or no, Monday. <laughs> Gotta break that American habit. We're going with international standard, and then we would have else if day is two, and I'll just type this out quickly. Okay, here we go. It's quite long. If day is one, Monday, two, Tuesday, and it's just a bunch of else ifs. If I change the day to two, we get Tuesday. If I change the day to seven, we get Sunday. Let's also add in a fallback. So if you didn't enter a number from one to seven, we'll console.log invalid day. All right, so this is fine, but it's a lot of work. And each time we're really just checking day against one value over and over and over until we find a match or until we don't find a match in the else runs. We can use a switch statement in a scenario like this, where we're taking one value and we're just checking it against multiple potential values. So the syntax for switch is quite a bit different. It looks like this, switch, and then the thing that we are checking. So for us, it would be day. Then we have our curly braces, and then we have a bunch of cases. So we would have case one, meaning if day is one. And inside of that, we don't actually have to use curly braces we can console.log Monday. And then we could have case two, console.log Tuesday. And let's just start with that. So let's make day two, refresh the page, and we get Tuesday, Tuesday, as you can see here. So I will flesh this out with the other days. There we go. So we have seven different cases. When day is one, do this. Day is two, do this. Three, and so on. I'll comment out the traditional conditional that we have up here. There's a problem with our switch at the moment, and you'll see it. Day is set to two. Let's see what we get when I refresh the page. Oh, geez. We got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We got everything except Monday. What if we change day to be four? Refresh the page. Now we get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's kind of odd. It's giving us every value after it matches. So if case is four, it does this, it does this, it does this, and this. If case is one, it does all of them. If case is six, or if day is six, we do this one and this one. So the reason this happens, it's kind of annoying, but what's happening here is that as soon as one of them matches, in our case, four, so day is four, this is true, none of these other cases are tested. And it's almost like it turns into this. All of that code runs without checking for a case. So it's looking for the first match, and then as soon as it finds it, everything else runs. And that seems like an odd choice. And we'll talk about why that happens in a moment. The way to fix this, if you only want one of these to run, is to add a break after each statement, after each case. So I'll make multiple cursors by holding Option and clicking, and then add break after each one. Now if I refresh, I only get the correct day. So if day is seven, I only get Sunday. If day is one, I should only get Monday. We still don't have our fallback. So if we have something like nine, we had that else earlier. We don't have an else. The way we write the equivalent, instead of else, we write default. And default will run at the end. So we would have invalid day, and now we get invalid day. If we have seven, we get Sunday, and it all works. Okay, 
So this is odd, but this is still much easier to read. Uh, it's a lot of lines, but it's much easier to read in my opinion than this. We don't have to do all of these parens and the curly braces. We don't have to check with triple equals over and over and over. You can just look at this and pretty quickly understand what's going on. If day is one, do this. If day is four, do this. As long as we have those breaks in there. Now, why do we have those breaks? I'm gonna show you another example. I'll comment this out for a moment. So here's a second example. We are taking an emoji. It's just a text description of an emoji like happy face and printing out the corresponding color or the main color. So a happy face is yellow, a sad face is yellow. Eggplant is purple, heart is red, and lips are also red. So right now they're all going to run, well, everything after we find a match. So happy face gives us yellow, yellow, purple, red, red. But if we add in our breaks, as we've seen, that fixes the problem. But we do have some duplicated console.logs. We have multiple things that are red and we have multiple that are yellow. We could rewrite this because of the way switch statements work, because of how they're uh, structured we can combine certain cases. And the way we do it looks like this. Let's do happy face and sad face. I'm just going to delete this entire thing here and put case sad face right here. Case sad face right above happy face and I don't have any code coming after it. So what happens here is that sad face could be a match, let's say it is. This is true, there's no break right here. And because there's no break, it moves on and it runs this code and then it hits a break. So we can do the same thing for heart and lips. We'll do case lips and then we can remove what we had down below right here. So same thing. If emoji is heart, this is not true. Not, nope. This is true. And then there's no code to run, but there wasn't a break. So then it just runs this code. As we saw, if you don't use a break after one of these cases, it's going to just run all the code that it sees. So at this point, let's try it out. We get yellow for sad face. Let's do lips. We get red. If we do heart, we should also get red. We don't have a default on this one and that's fine. Sometimes you don't. So that's pretty much it for switches. The syntax is definitely a little different, but if you have one variable, one thing that you are checking against multiple values, like we're doing here, it's a nice and easy to understand way of writing that logic compared to doing a ton of else ifs. There's just a couple gotchas. As you saw, you need to make sure there's, there's really just one. You have to use break when it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't if you're trying to have multiple cases that correspond to the same piece of code. Anyway, that's Switch. 